Next we're going to put dowel rods, just short pieces, in the neck joint right between the mortise and the tenon. I'm going to drill a hole that's the right size for the dowel rod, 5 sixteenths of an inch. And once the dowels are sunken in, this neck will be locked in place and it'll be really very unlikely that it's ever going to move. Here are the dowels that will go into the two holes. They don't go all the way down, but they'll go oh, about three quarters of an inch from the bottom. So put a little glue in the hole. Put a little glue on the dowel. Getting the glue out of the truss rod channel. We're ready to put the fretboard back on. Don't know if it shows up, but we've drilled a couple of pilot holes and put two tiny nails to keep the fretboard from skating around. So we don't really need these clamps here, and the fretboard doesn't go anywhere. Um, it lines up very nicely with where it was originally, so that's a good thing. Almost makes me feel like I know what we're doing. <laughs> so that's it. The, the truss rod is epoxied in place. Obviously, we've removed all the frets. That's a tight fit. I have to crawl that. Um, so let's just spread some glue. I think that's got it. Yeah. Put this on here to hold it. And now we use the Dr. Katie's and Nikki method of wrapping plague wounds. These are great after trying every different clamping suggestion that's ever been made. You can see just a little bit of squeeze out, which is exactly what we're looking for, because anything more just makes a mess and doesn't really improve the adhesion. Yep. So then we just take a clamp to keep the rubber band in place. And we'll probably put one more clamp here just because. 
Because there isn't a reason not to. Right. And that's it. Of course, we want the replacement neck to be as close as possible to the size and shape of the original neck. So I've got a, a pattern gauge here, and if I put it right at the fifth fret of the original neck, and then put it at the fifth fret of the new neck, Probably doesn't show up too well on the video, but, uh, oh, that helps. <laughs> um, they're pretty close to the same profile, so I think we're down to doing the final sanding on this and then start putting some finish on it. The neck is sprayed, and... Now the Jeff masked off the body and is going to start sanding the lacquer. Once it's all sanded, it gets buffed, and then we can put the instrument back together like it never happened. I like sanding with the 220 to start out with, even though it doesn't really need to be that aggressive, but it requires less pressure, so that reduces the likelihood that I'm going to spot yeah. through somewhere, yeah. as I can sand more lightly. And like you said, with having put color in the lacquer, it just complicates any breakthrough. Right. Yeah. So. So it sort of seems almost counterintuitive. You would think you'd want to use a finer paper, but the downside of using a finer paper is you have to be a little bit more forceful when you're sanding, mm -hmm. and then you can break through. Which is not such a good thing. We've all done it. You've been there, done that. Got the t-shirt at home to prove it. 